All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back once more. Captain Zag ready to face off against the Buzz here. This is certainly going to be a treat. Now, Austin and I had an opportunity to talk here before this match started back in Smash 4. The Buzz slayed so many Bayos that he actually became a Bay. I don't know how that works or what, what math that was, but you know what? That's just how things went down. But right yo, now, yo, not what? fighting against the Bayo. He's playing Daisy, and my man Captain Zach is showing no signs of cooling his jets here anytime soon. Well, uh, you say that, but then the Buzz brings it back with that, like, that up smash conversion off the edge of the stage. And... Rod, what what grade of math did you uh, graduate from? What, what was that again? Was that algebra? Was, uh, was that, I was think that grade six? Was it? I think somewhere in there, man. I stopped. Me, I, me I, not me not know math so well, sir. Okay, I got you. <laughs> I'm good, one, I get what, what? What just happened? Did he commit to the wing pick then? He, he might have right there, man. Uh, regardless, whatever the case may be, Captain Zach's only going to take that one full force, at least 75% here, man. And the great thing about Captain Zach is that, you know, this character's this character is playing Daisy. She can combo really well, and she can finish really well too. And one of her biggest weaknesses don't really get exploited by um by a character like Pikmin or Olimar. So he has a lot of advantages here in this matchup. So again, guys, this is going to be the third round of Swiss brackets. We're doing five rounds. No one gets eliminated until all five are done. Then we tally up the points to see who moves on to the eight-man bracket later on. So even though someone loses, they're still going to be playing more matches in the future, which is why we see the buzz still playing here right now against Zach. But nice call out. Goes for the forward smash, goes for the trade, and gets the kill. Not too much damage on him, but as I say that, gets off stage. Comes like trying to retaliate with that forward air. Forward air being such a strong move for Daisy. She can just easily throw it out, get the kill, have, covers a lot of range, can hit from behind. She reaches for a crown so far. That's right. Now, I can see how this match could be a little troublesome, uh, you know, for somebody like the Buzz. You know, the Buzz obviously is, is very used to controlling the tone and, and the pacing of a match where you have a character like Daisy who does, doesn't care about you creating space to try to pluck Pikmin or doesn't care that you're throwing Pikmin to keep her out. She's just going to keep forward airing until she finds a way in, man. And that is something that is kind of throwing the buzz here for a loop, man. As you see right here, completely lapped in terms of stocks and percent. Things are not looking good right here for this little astronaut. Yeah, I see him going off stage with the downer, just falling down. And DeBuzz, again, playing the ledge game as strong as he can. Because of the floating that Captain Zack is establishing here, it's kind of hard for DeBuzz to predict where he's going to land specifically. But he threw out that down smash from a year in advance, and DeBuzz got caught by it. You saw him get Nick at the very end because he went for the neutral get up on the stage. Going to get caught by it in a clean two stock coming from Captain Zack. Yes, very, very clean, man, as we kick this one off. It's, um, you know, I, I expect nothing less. You know from this young man you know he's always been a very maybe not super aggressive but he's always been a very explosive player you know he's been very very well thought out with his aggression and when he decides to come in and when he decides to go ham in any small window that he sees to strike he's going to strike first and ask questions later and that's exactly what we've seen right there uh, he was able to find a way in when he was plucking pikmin he was able to get in between him and, and the pikmin being tossed he did not allow uh you know the bus to kind of short hop fair away from him to try to outspace him he just at one direction that was forward and so wonderful stuff right there to catch the deck as we kick off this match let's see if game number two works a little bit better for the buzz he is one of the kings of adaptation on the fly so let's see what we get here yeah i mean he's sticking with his guns with captain olimar i'm a little shocked he didn't swap over to palo's hannah just to like, give it a little shot against daisy but there's something that he knows that we don't so here we go town city yet again it's a good stage for olimar because it gets rid of the platforms turns it into a stage where uh, Daisy's not going to be able to platform camp as much. It a little bit, makes it a little bit harder for her to try to go for the approaches. And you'll so, you see the buzz trying to run away from Captain Zack the entire time, throwing out Pikmin, catching the side beat from Daisy as well. It's just trying to throw his little soldiers towards the opponent to prevent, you know, to protect the president. That's right. You know, the ultimate shield right there, at least for Olimar, is definitely those those Pikmin. They do a pretty good job at keeping a character like Daisy out. And right now, as you see right here, he's playing a little bit safer, look, playing a little bit more, a little bit more precise. Now using things like back air to kind of keep Daisy out. Not really looking to trade uh, trade aerials anymore. All right, here we go. Uh, Captain Zach running in again, trying to play that ledge game against the Buzz. You notice that he goes for the turnip poles every now and then. Whenever he sees an opening, might as well be just to try to like compete against him. But there we go. We got a grab with the blue Pikmin. Managed to up throw him, kill him off the top of the blast zone, and Debuzz taking away that first stock adaptation at its finest. That's right. We talked about it, man. He's certainly living up to it now. With this in mind, Captain Zach really. Oh my God, a strong. Now see that? That's a Captain Zach stuff right there. Like the forest matches that look randy, but they're actually not because you know that you're going to try to roll in. That's exactly what he's always looking for. That down smash blast. For 10 years. 
Honestly, Captain Zack just keeps catching it because he's getting inside of Olimar's head. He's getting inside of DeBuzz's head. Every single time DeBuzz is on that ledge, I think his like safety panic option is to go for that ledge get up and Captain Zack is starting to capitalize on that. And in the future could be some conditioning. Maybe he tries to ready a down smash, but instead Opsin just try to catch the roll, which you know Olimar just did. And DeBuzz yes. is st still, still a tied game, Rod, still a tied game. I agree, you know, definitely a tied game. You know, honestly, anything could happen. I, I will say I I'm starting to appreciate Captain Zach's ledge pressure more than anything else. So what you'll see Olimar do a lot, you'll see Olimar throw a Pikmin to try to, you know, lighten the load so he can try to recover with ease. But every time a Pikmin is thrown, Captain Zach always unloads the Toad every time, man, and like, tries to counter him off stage and keep him back into a corner. So there's just a lot of tools that Daisy has that can really get up and leave Olimar's kit. Oh my goodness! Nice stuff there. Do tossing off the one two down there to stop the Peach Bomb. Yeah, so oh, what the heck? That, Rand that Randy ass stitch. Oh, I don't know if that was a stitch, but it was a turn up. Threw it all the way down to the bottom and caught the buzz as dude just trying to recover. I don't, I don't even know if that was planned by Captain Zack, but good stuff. We take those nonetheless. Captain Zack yeah, right honestly. now sitting very, very comfortable, man. For oh, wait a well, second. Maybe a little too well, comfortable, Austin. Uh, could it could it hit the Mary Poppins back to the stage, man? I mean, he, he tried his hardest. He just he missed the ledge ever so slightly. And what all that damage, he still has a pretty strong lead, has ledge control. And Buzz is going to try to go for the other side of the stage to mix him up, but able to run all the way across town and city to catch up to him. And again, Buzz cannot find his way back down to the ground. And oh, uh, those hips don't lie, man. Those hips do not lie. Shakira, Shakira, indeed, man. I agree. They most certainly don't, man. And they hold no prisoners either, man. When they're here to take stocks, they're just here to take stocks. Unfortunately, there's just not going to be anything the opposing side sometimes can do about it, man. So with this in mind, wonderful job right there. My man Castle's at going up 2-0. And not just an any 2 I mean, a pretty convincing 2-0 here in this match. Yeah, like, th this is looking pretty dominant in Captain Zack's favor. I, d I don't know if... The buzz is able to like find some sort of like adaptation to this. It just seems like he's just getting outplayed constantly by him. You recognize that every single time he's on the ledge, he's just not. He never gets back to the stage. Like it is incredibly difficult for him to try to reset back to neutral. Yeah, absolutely. So let's see what we get here for this next game. The buzz. I'm sure he's still playing Pikmin and Olimar, but I mean, when you're back against the wall like this, sometimes it doesn't hurt to bust out the secondary, to bust out the mixed up. Maybe there's something that, you know, his Rosalina knows that maybe Captain Zack is just not up to date on. Who knows? Uh-oh, I talked about it. Here it is. Oh, here we go. We know DeBuzz was definitely thinking about this. He's been messing around with the Rosalina and Luma in the background. Maybe this is the time to bust her out. You know this is his, like the original main from Smash 4 that he like like fell in love with. He saw him. He was known for the one bringing out the Luma plush, you know, advancing the metagame with Rosalina. And, you know, the transition to Ultimate wasn't the same, but DeBuzz still wants to make her work. Let's see if something happens. We'll see, man. It's going to be the Battle of the Princesses right here, man. Let's get it. Okay, the dare right up, right on the ledge of stage. I see how pivotal that is versus a character like um, you know, Rosalina. Obviously, no hitbox for recovery. That move can keep her off stage. Oh my goodness! Can we talk about you getting juggled? Yeah, I, I, the thing is, another thing on top of this is that maybe Kevin Zack doesn't know exactly how to fight against Rosa in this game. Maybe just carry on the tr all your uh, playing experience from Smash 4. Might be able to do it. But again, Kevin Zack taking away the first stock, trying to exchange those turnips yet again. And honestly, I whenever you get the kill like that, you just want to try to like pick up as many turnips as possible to try to look for like the best one, like a stitch, a bomb bomb, something like that. I agree. And yeah, one thing that Rosalina kind of kept, uh, you know, in this game from the last game is that, you know, she is just still light nonetheless. You know, none of none of the buzz's characters, unfortunately, have the luxury of trading blows, going blow for blow with somebody like Daisy, somebody like Peach. You have to respect what that character does. You have to try to find your openings a little bit better. And he's doing a pretty okay job for the most part, though he is in a deficit. Doing a pretty okay job at staying away from Captain Zack and only coming in when he needs to. Again, that's a classic Rosalina Luma trap. You see him put Luma up above and just goes for the rapid jab right there, so it covers like pretty much every option. Mm -hmm. you know, so I'm catching that roll. Now the buzz is off stage, trying to find his way back down onto the ledge. The down airs are a, a constant, rapid. Uh, swing of attacks to try to catch the two frame on the ledge, but DeBuzz was still able to get back to the stage safe and sound. Have a little bit of oh an my. input error there from DeBuzz. You saw him uh, just go for the up smash. Honestly, if Daisy's gonna float right in front of you like that, just throw it out. It'll catch. That's exactly what DeBuzz did. 
All right, and I think that's something the Buzz needs to kind of do a little bit better here is, is to just be a little bit more mindful of when Daisy decides to jump or when she decides to float and try to beat her to the punch. And I love the adaptation that's coming right here, you know, how, how the meta is like evolving just in this set alone. You saw Captain Zack throw out a turn up. So DeBuzz's answer was to go for like, the, to, to get the down B, to get the projectile and throw it back at Captain Zack. So then Captain Zack's answer is to go for the toad counter now. So it just keeps, it becomes, it comes each step. It keeps evolving more and more. Now stuck in a very bad spot, but gets back onto the stage. Luma saving the day. There it is, 63%. Very comfortable position for right to be in for my man, Captain Zack. And then the back row once more, as we said before, the hits just do not lie. Has a bomb in hand, though. This is not good here for my man, the Bud. Oh, that's mine. Oh, like, it's actually phenomenal for him, but unfortunately doesn't throw the bomb on Adam just in time. He managed to avoid it. You saw Captain Zack actually go for a top because he recognized that he had a bomb on. Okay. Alright, there we go. DeBuzz bringing it back. Hatches that little side B with a ledge. Goes for the spike! Fantastic trade for DeBuzz. Brings us into a one stock apiece match. All right, what is the going buzz on? Right here. Lot of like <laughs> play. Lot. He got it. I mean, he was stuck between a rock and a hard spot, literally, man. Okay. The dare at the ledge once more. I like that. Maybe we need to start doing a uh, down smash, though. He, the buzz will hang out on the ledge a little longer than most players if he feels like that you won't punish a uh, punish his re-grab or punish his ledge uh, in vulnerability. But whatever the case may be right here, the buzz has kind of brought this thing back to closer quarters to what my man Captain Zach probably anticipated the up smash from behind. No Luma right there. You notice the buzz is trying to throw out a lot of down tilts to try to do the poking game against Zach. Finds it back down to the ground, knows he's going to go for the double jump, just trying to cover a lot of aerial options with the back air, but Zach looking to close this out with a forward air. The buzz almost SD'd it. That was insanely scary for him. He had to commit to that uh, up B to get back to the stage as safe as possible. The launch star coming in clutch. Mm -hmm. The offstage pressure. Smart stuff right there. Captain Zach being a little bit more relentless now, not just staying at the ledge, but actually electing to jump off the ledge. But once more, there's the back row from the buzz. He's got to wait for Wait a little bit of respawn in there. Doesn't even need Luma. Just catches the roll on the stage. Kicks him with the toe. Gets the down smash. And DeBuzz putting on a point on the board with Rosalina and Luma. That's I knew a... it. I knew, I knew it was going to happen. Oh, see, I said, you know what? You know, he's he's been doing so well with Pikmin and Olimar. But there are just some, you know, the matchups that Olimar does well in, he does well. But there are some matchups where he just really struggles. And sometimes it's not enough to try to keep adapting on the fly with the character you know the best. Sometimes it might serve a little bit better to pull out an old secondary, pull out an old pocket and just see what, what magic can still be done. And Rosalina certainly had enough gas in the tank to steer towards a victory, man. So beautiful stuff right there to my man, the bus. Captain Zack obviously has a bit of readjusting to do as we move into his next game. But the beauty of this is that Captain Zack is still up two games to the buzz as one. And what's fantastic about this is that the buzz He's playing with his heart rod. That's what he's doing. That, that's what makes this beautiful. He's like, you know what? I, this is like, I'm already down two to zero. I'm just going to try it. We're still in Swiss. This is the time to try it out instead of doing it in like the single elimination bracket later on. Let's just see if this will work. And now DeBuzz is like, wait a second. Hold on. This character seems to be working. It might just be like a, uh, I don't know. Maybe just Olimar just can't deal with the floatiness of Daisy. And Rosalind is just like the answer to it. Or maybe it's just like a lack of matchup knowledge in Captain Zack's favor. Yes, again, he knows how to fight Rosalina and Luma back in the Smash 4 days, but this is a different Rosalina. Yes, she's different for, you know, I guess about most of the Rosalina may feel like for worse reasons, but I'm sure that there's a couple things that she has that makes her look a little bit better than, than in the last iteration. Who knows? But the fact of the matter is, is that he's doing a phenomenal job. Obviously, this is looking like a match straight out of Smash 4, taking the platforms away from the opponent, holding down the lead here and just really making it that much more difficult for the opponent to try to come down. You see 36% versus 119 and climbing. I am anticipating, you know, Captain Zack taking a trip here to the emergency room pretty soon. Honestly, it's kind of bizarre to see Captain Zack continuously going for the turnip because I feel like the buzz is getting more mileage out of the turnips than Captain Zack. Like, in all honesty, it's starting to become a little tough for him. Right there, there's an opportunity for him to go for an up smash off of that side B. Just couldn't react in time. That's okay. DeBuzz has a strong lead. Stayed off stage presence, 139%. DeBuzz is just going to chill. He he had it. If he just, it, it, there might have been some latency issue or he just reacted too late, but he had that read hardcore. You saw him just standing there waiting for the roll. And Captain Zack's not going to be able to get to the stage. Doesn't matter. DeBuzz back on the stage with the first stock going in his favor.
That's kind of the Captain Zack special, man. Like, we've seen him do that back in Smash Force when he was playing Bayonetta. You just go a little too ham off stage because you know that you are just a deadly force out there. And you become so much of a deadly force, and unfortunately, you end up doing more damage to yourself than to the opponent. So, you have to be a little mindful. I understand that the Buzz's characters are sitting ducks off stage. I know we kind of stated that in the past, but you just can't do too much. Sometimes keep the match grounded. And like you see right there, the short hop forward has claimed the lives of many. And obviously, uh, it's, he's just going to hold true to that statement here in Smash Ultimate. Beautiful stuff. And manages to catch that air dodge into the ground with yet another up tilt, 104%. I feel like every single time DeBuzz is just catching these landings over and over, traps him with the Luma, goes for the rapid jab, just a little bit more damage to push him back off stage. Manages to set him up again, trying to get the kill with Luma instead. Again, this is the same case as Olimar, right? Using your uh, your toy, your Olimar, your, your your Pikmin, or your Luma to try to get the kill for you. Because Luma has the kill potential, and again, Kevzak doesn't seem to have an answer for that situation, does he, Rod? It, does, it doesn't seem like Captain Zack does, you know, it, he was able to kind of control the pacing and just the, the spacing in the last match because he had the turn up. And then it just really felt like the Buzz didn't really know how to deal with that. But Luma is much more than a turn up. All right, she knows, this this character knows how to either trap you at the ledge or they, it knows how to trap you in between Rosalina and the Luma. There's just so much that the Buzz can really do with Rosalina just in terms of the shutting down options making things very uncomfortable for the opponent. I just feel like maybe Olimar could not quite do. Yeah, Luma's a star, bro. I mean, like you said, the Pikmin are the vegetables, but Luma is a star looking for fame. So here we go, jumping right back in. We got DeBuzz having st uh, entire stock lead against him on this battlefield stage. DeBuzz being cheeky, I like that. He jumps off stage while keeping Luma on the platform to do some damage. It allows him to try to get, regain some stage control and avoids the turnips again, you know, using the down beat to give him a lot of like uh, room to work with to be able to catch onto the platforms. And you just see that little combo DeBuzz was trying to go for, neutralizing it to up it. Platform. It looked like he was trying to jab lock him. He was trying to go for something sexy there. I mean, I wasn't exactly sure. Oh my goodness! Oh, that's there we go. Nice or top. And honestly, that's what Captain Zack's been looking for the entire time. You know, throughout that down air on the ledge, it's a long-lasting hitbox that can immediately just destroy the buzz because of the way that launch star works. It gives him a two frame. There's no active hitbox, so there's really no risk for Captain Zack going for that. Yes, Captain Zack has been playing pretty much. Uh, pretty much more solid from the left. You know, in those earlier spots, there's a few instances where he would give up positioning for a forward smash or up smash read off the ledge. Now he's not doing that anymore. Now he's just playing at the ledge. He's not looking for a read, he's just looking for his button. Oh my goodness! But he should be looking out for what's up underneath him, man. The bus with the up smash, not quite enough though. Does get the KO animation, but wasn't quite enough there to get the actual stock taken itself here. My man Captain Zach Yo. lives to fight another day. <laughs> Luma was boxing there for a second. You saw Luma go up to Captain Zack's shield. It was just applying shield pressure all by themselves. And then finally, another up smash coming out. Catches the air dodge. Managed to get the kill. And DeBuzz has brought this to a Game 5 situation yet again. And then, honestly, we've been seeing a lot of Game 5s. But this was the first set after those first two games. I was like, okay, looks like this might just be a 3-0 and a handshake and move on. But DeBuzz has brought this back, dog. Again, as we talked about, you know, he's so good at adapting on the fly, whether that means that he needs to make adjustments with all of our, or maybe that means he just needs to switch off altogether. Now, the real question is, does Captain Zack switch characters? Does he stay Daisy or does he does he pick up Bale? Like, what what does he do in this situation here? Honestly, I feel like Daisy's still working out. I think it's a Captain Zack problem. I think it's Captain Zack getting outplayed by the buzz here. It's not necessarily Rosalina and Luma. Yes, there might be some matchup inexperience, but I think if I was in Captain Zack's shoes, I would definitely want to stick around with Daisy. Maybe swap to Peach. I don't know. I feel like P Daisy would probably be the better pick still, just because of like the extra combos. But like you said, you called it, Rod. Switching over to Bayonetta, the witch herself. It's a blast from the past here, Austin. It's, it's feeling like arm size of Civil War, Dreamhack 2017 mm. all over again. Let's go ahead and get it, ladies and gentlemen. Rosalina and Luma, a witch with no memory. Bayonetta, yeah, she's I, back in it. Let's get it. I feel like I am watching Smash 4. Like, uh, honest to God, like, like DeBuzz playing Rosalina, Captain Zack for fight using Bayonetta. Like, what world is this? <laughs> All right. Oh, that, that, that was scary for a second. I, I, actually, no, I, don't, I think Captain Zack did that on purpose. He was trying to catch DeBuzz with the uppies through the stage. You saw DeBuzz respecting the hitboxes of uh, Witch Twist. Definitely something you're just going to have to, you know, st stay a little bit back from, which is why Captain Zack probably picked Lilac Cruise. Hmm. So my biggest question in this matchup is the utilization of sliding heel kick. Now, obviously, in this game, 
difference between this one and last and the last one is that sliding heel kick, the second kick doesn't come out if it does not connect. But does Luma count as something being hit so that the second kick always comes out, or does it not? That's what that's what I'm really most worried about here in this match here. And you know, honestly, it's something that I'm not too quite sure of myself, and it's something we're just gonna have to see as the match evolves into it. But here we go, Captain Zach catching all these up airs, managed to combo it into a back air himself in the center of the stage. He wasn't able to get the kill just yet, but a lot of this time you see the buzz not wanting to get his hands dirty, sending Luma in every single time. And th that was the correct answer for Zach to go for. You saw him in the middle of a rapid jab string. After I think it's 11th frames or something, you can just immediately roll behind them and try to go for a punish to buzz. Notice it was coming. Oh. And this is just turning into a projectile war at this point. Honestly, because of Lilac Cruz's little angles, able to duck underneath the projectiles. Yes, yeah, so that's very Smash 4 esque right there. You know, we, we would see the Bales in the past use Bullet Climax, use Bullet Arts to try to keep characters and players like the Buzz and Rosalina Luma out. But one thing that, you know, the buzz does have, he has the gravitational pull, so he can kind of pull the bullet climax away. There's the fourth throw. Very, very strong. Gets the red stuff, but not enough, though, to get the stock taken. And being relentless off stage, no matter what version of Smash it is, Captain Zach knows how to be a shark in the water out there. And he's trying to get Luma a little bit closer. I mean, he's got a lot of health in him. It will survive trying to apply pressure. Good option. Just goes for the, uh, the heel slide, or rather the afterburner kick right out of shield. Try to just catch the buzz swinging off there and a good answer going for the up air to catch it and no one's lost a stock yet that's what's surprising to me until finally zach runs in gets the grab just sends him flying into outer space captain zach taking away that first stock i understand why the buzz went for that all up like he did the buzz never goes for anything and unless it's like very well thought out and he probably felt that okay the buzz or captain zach he did a lot off stage probably going to be some landing lag because as we know the more in that it does the more lag she has when she lands he went in mm. just a little bit too early on the trigger and of course time to punish and unfortunately for him, the punishment is just not stopping, damn it. You see he's not allowed to land for free, he's not allowed any action back on first center stage unless Captain Zach's head goes. And honestly, DeBuzz could just hold shield against heel slide. Like and like he go for the biggest punish he wants because of how much lag is afterwards, like you said. And DeBuzz again doesn't see the uh, afterburner kick coming the second time, so I'm just standing still waiting to see what Captain Zach's options were in that scenario. But now DeBuzz doesn't really I mean he kinda has to approach eventually. Captain Zach does have a pretty strong lead here, 60% deficit. But getting headshot again, this is another reason why Captain Zach picked the stage. Uh, these bullets are, are just incredibly hard to d deal with because of the little slant on the edge of the stage. A lot of percent being taken here up close in person. There's the up throw. I like that man with the uh, bat within. We don't see a lot of that here anymore in Smash Ultimate, but bat within though, twice in a row, coming out to save Captain Zach, man. Okay. Covers low, tries to give himself some coverage up for a knee with the upper. Snaps legs and then goes for the get up attack. Something pretty uncharacteristic of the buzz. The buzz usually does neutral get up off the lens, but he knows that the stakes are very high right now. Try to go for an up smash in case Zach wanted to go for a jump out of shield. Again, throwing out Luma, trying to call him back. Even though he ate some damage, does not matter. And, and Zach is going to be going for these heel slides a lot because if, if he manages to land them, even though they're a little more unsafe than we were in Smash 4 by a, actually a large margin rather than a little bit, but if he manages to land them, it leads into some big damage. Manages to push the buzz off stage. But the, the buzz is relentless when keeping the stage control. Even if all those bolts are there, there he goes. That's the buzz finally get, you know, that was conditioning at its finest. Every single time, Zach was able to catch that afterburner kick after the ledge. This time around, the buzz, it's like, oh, you're going to hit me? Not, not this time. I'm going to go for the shield and to re reverse around up smash. And now we have ourselves a one stock match. Final stock of this set. That's right. And again, Captain Zach sticking to his guns. No pun intended. Staying on the left and right sides of the stage because they have the coverage or they have the slant down there. And he's using uncharged bullet climax or just regular bullet climax. Regardless, whatever the case may be, it's enough to eat up chill. It's enough to keep the buzz in place. And it certainly is enough there to get rid of Luma. And unfortunately, because Luma is here in the picture, uh, he's eating much more witch twist than what he probably would if he was just playing all more. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, most definitely. And another thing that's happening is I, just these afterburner kicks are costing Zach a lot of damage because it's like if Zach wants to get in on DeBuzz, his like number one option to go to is the afterburner kick and DeBuzz is just starting to adapt it, you know, made it seem like it was a pretty safe option and is now starting to bring it back. But hold on a second, Zach trying to catch these heels with the up air. Good turnaround from DeBuzz, man. to find his way back down to the stage as safe as possible with that up air. Camping these platforms again. Throws out an active hitbox as he lands, but gets caught by the forward smash from Zach. He's very rarely done that with Bayonetta. Just on the edge of the stage, 
throws out the punch and has taken away a 3-2 victory with Bayonetta against Rosalina and Luma. What in the world, Rod?